my friends, it's that time again, and well, you know, the time to build another aircraft, and this time it's the TBF Avenger from Minicraft model kits in 1 to 144 scale. Now, this kit is small and sweet, but yet short and simple, so you know, as you see in the instructions and also on the build, it's something that anybody can do, uh, such as a simple novice uh, modeler, skill modeler, I would consider myself. You know, uh, still being relatively new to this, as you know, couldn't already tell. And but really, this kit is so much fun to build, and I could really recommend it to anybody who's interested in the building aircraft that you know want a fast weekend build, or really, you can even do that in just one whole day and then paint it in the next. So you can even see the decals and also the variety of stuff that it comes with, you know, your options. But, you know, I just did it just off the box art, which I love that nice, deep, rich blue. And here, well, for the interior, it's, you know, kind of unnecessary. Really, you can just paint it black, but I just had some fun with the inside of it just by painting it a yellow green. Even though most of it will be, you know, covered and not seen, I still did it anyways. But uh, this is entirely up to you. And just to be safe for the landing gear, I used Loctite super glue to make sure it was extra secured so that they won't break off or, you know, eventually twist off as if it was to apply, you know, just only you know, Mr. Cement. But I do actually add on to Mr. Cement just in hopes that it'll help even increase the strong bond of the two glues. And now we can reach to the fun part of this build by finally beginning to paint the model with this flat blue and light blue by both Tamiya and will it would act as our base coat color pretty much as I know this will be actually as our primer as well and I didn't see any need for to add any primer you know like from Tamiya surface primer or uh, spray primer uh, I, I didn't see any need for any of that because Tamiya paints, once you build up in enough coats, are pretty durable, so, uh, yeah, I, I even eventually just add on some varnishes, which even help protect it, so, uh, if you aren't adding on any varnishes, just know that if you're not applying enough uh, layers of paint with Tamiya, it will become brittle, you know, and easily to chip off, so, uh, just keep that in mind, but here you can just watch me do the process of painting it, and see how I add on different layers and colors of a dark deep sea blue and even some post shading with some uh, light blue. Now onto some wet blending, I'm gonna use some sea blue as like a very dark, you know, almost practically black, uh, deep shade color. And then of course moving on, moving on to the flat blue and light blue. As you know, you could use a retarder, but 
Uh, I just wanted to work quick and fast with this, as we can eventually correct mistakes with glazes and other layers of thin paint, which, you know, there's no worries at this stage, and when, you know, I can easily repaint it if I make any mistakes. But here you see some post shading, and then, of course, obviously, as I said, wet blending, or you can even do another technique of just getting a damp paper towel and a damp brush, and then uh, scooping up a little bit of paint from the Tamiya uh, lid bottle you see there, and just rubbing off ex the excess on the paper towel as if you were almost dry brushing. And then as you have, apply on that excess onto the model, you uh, th then create a soft, almost you know, subtle glow to, to the model without having any worries to, you know, oh, you might ruin uh, a brush. So you may want to use a crappy old brush so that it doesn't ruin your fancy expensive brushes. But here you can see that it's very effective and it's very nice and almost therapeutic in a way. To seal the model and protect it, I used some Tamiya Clear Varnish, which is a very nice glossy varnish, uh, which I recommend that you pick up uh, for nicely sealing in your models and giving it that nice shiny gloss look. Uh, you can even go for a satin look if you want to of your choice, but I eventually toned it down maybe with certain areas of satin and glossy, uh, but really it's, in, you know, it's up to you and it's your model and you have fun with it. I think it eventually gave the model a nice look and overall presentation, uh, especially helping uh, with the decals adhere to the model just a little bit better. And of course, I'm using some Microsol here, and as you watch me fiddle around with the decals, at least three to four layers of Microsol to help make sure the decal adheres to the model nice and snug. For the metallic bits of the plane, I use some Vallejo Metal Color Aluminum, or if you're not from the US, it's, you know, you pronounce it as aluminium, but here you can see I applied it on the nose of the aircraft, which is also known as the hub, and as well as on the exhaust here you can see, but eventually you see me applying some chipping as with the aluminum color, as you know, mainly a majority of aircraft are made out of aluminum, and as well as for the edges of the propellers, I just paint them in a nice Tamiya flat yellow. Now, I, I actually made a huge mistake here on the cockpit, you know, and, or actually on the canopy uh, glass, and really, uh, I had to reposition the rear machine gun, which is a 50 cal, if you didn't know, uh, and rearrange it into a more fitting position so that I could place on the canopy in the more correct way. And of course, I'm using canopy glue, you know, go figure, just for the canopy, and it'll nicely adhere it on, because if you use super glue or even uh, liquid cement, it will fog up the canopy and completely ruin it. Uh, unless, you know, foggy is what you're going for, but not on this one. And now for the very dark brown wash for the model to, you know, to help accentuate the details and, you know, other areas of possible grime and shading. So I ended up just pushing out or inwards of inside the model of that glass that you saw there earlier, which was you know already painted up and it the position it was terrible. I don't know if it was the kid's fault or my fault, 
but um, I'll, I'll just blame myself because that's typically how it goes. But here I'm just using some Vallejo gloss varnish to create some of my own glass, which I think came out pretty decently. Just uh, make sure that you apply on the right amount, otherwise it'll shrink. Now with some Tamiya Weathering Master set, uh, if I can get it open, uh, with a nice light sand, sand, or oh, more desert yellow, and a mud color. It isn't necessary to do what I'm showing you here, unless you want to create some nice uh, subtle texture, but uh, you can just apply on some water uh, within that palette and just mix it up a little bit, and then you'll eventually create your own little dust wash, which I eventually show you here, but uh, this, again, it's not necessary to create little chunks. And then I just used some black uh, weathering pastels from, I believe, Mr. Hobby, which is a Japanese company. And well, it just acts as our soot, you know, for the exhaust pipe, as you can see there, and as well on the other side, of course. I, I tried my best not to overdo it, but I think I ended up, you know, achieving so. Which is not exactly what I wanted, but it still looks nice and matte. And for the wire rigging, I use some Gorilla Super Glue Precise Gel. And well, since that Precise Gel will give me a nicer, slower drying time, it'll give me more time to work with as I apply it on with a toothpick or just, you know, better yet, probably to use a wire if you have one. And here you just see me using some uh, heat, heated up sprue that I stretched out. You know, you may be familiar with this technique of creating antennas for tanks and other AFVs, but it can also work for uh, small wire rigging uh, probably depending on the scale but if you do have some sewing line which i believe it is you know, nice and black thin line they can use for your aircraft and other ships then that'll be perfect but this is all i had avail available to me uh, at, at this time so it just worked out just fine at, at least i think and for the final effect we're going to be using some matte mod podge which is a well, as you see uh, on the entire bottle, it's exactly as it says, a matte varnish so that we can create some imperfections under certain angles of light. You can do this with other matte varnishes, you know, uh, maybe some Tamiya or uh, maybe Vallejo. But uh, for me, when I tested those out, they always acted out as more subtle, but uh, that was just up to my choice. And you see here that under the... Uh, fast drying time you can see under the different angles of light it shows matte and semi-gloss and even glossy but i uh, thank you all for watching and i uh, hope you enjoy the final presentation of the model